All right, so let's get started. Um, pull up. I guess I need to get your show you. So if you go to modules and go to digital image notes, you can see um, these are the notes we're going to be looking at, and these are the fill in blank versions. You need to complete those. So I'm going to go ahead and download this. And we will open it up. And I'm going to give you all a few minutes to get that ready and get your fill the blank notes up. I think that's plenty of time for you to gotten those film blank notes up. Um, so let's move forward with this. It's only 17 slides if you haven't seen that, so it's not going to be too bad. All right, so image sizing. So aspect ratio, the ratio of the width to the height of an image on screen or, or screen. Uh, scaling is changing the size of an image or object. Uh, proportion is a part share or number con uh, considered in cooperative or in comparative uh, relation to a whole. So again, you probably already know these words for the most part, but I just want to make sure you got a good understanding on them, um, and just make sure you kind of know the difference between the three. Uh, while aspect ratio is that width to height um, ratio, scaling is changing that, um, changing the size of an image. It will change your aspect ratio, for instance, and then proportion um, a part, a share, or a number. Um, so I think you got that pretty easily. So the rule of thirds, this is a very uh, important uh, idea when it comes to design. So the rule of thirds is a uh, rule of thumb or guideline which applies to the process of composing visual images such as design, films, paintings, and photographs. So when you're looking at any kind of film, picture, or anything you see, um, there's a lot of times it's going to line up on that. Um, can you all see my mouse? I hope you all can see my mouse. Um, it's going to line up all these little intersecting lines here. As you can see, Chris Pratt in the, uh, gosh, I went Bradley, uh, Jurassic, uh, which one is this, Jurassic World? I can't remember. Um, but you can see he's kind of lined up on that, that line right there, his, right where his nose kind of is and his eyes. You can see that there's an intersection and there's an intersection here. This is the most important shot we're looking at. We're not looking at anything on the left top here. We're looking at the right side. Um, his hand is also near an intersection as well. So basically you put the most important information in an intersection. It doesn't have to be on the right. It can be on the left. Um, but in these two examples, it's on the right. So same with the dog. The dog is at those two intersections. That's the thing you're focusing on. You're not focusing on anything on the left side. So. Uh, these are just some more important terms you need to remember for color. Um, hue is a color, so like if we're using the word hue, it's just interchangeable, honestly, for color. Um, value is the brightness of a color. Tint is a hue plus white. Shade is a hue plus black. Now that's very confusing because we think about tinting windows, they get darker, right? Um, so don't get confused on that. Um, so just make sure you remember that. Um, and then saturation is the amount of hue used um, a color's intensity. So pretty basic stuff. Just remember you might want to kind of keep those noted and go back and look over them more times. So, so uh, by, excuse me, by, by cubic sharpener, I'm trying to say some things at once. Um, there are many tools that allow you to sharpen your images in Photoshop. Um, by Cubic Sharpener, for instance, um, it might be very hard to tell through Zoom. It's even hard to tell kind of on this PowerPoint itself. But that is basically on the right we have by Cubic Sharper, so it should be sharper than just the by Cubic. Okay. 
Resolution. So um, resolution pixels are the most common unit of measurement for computer screen display. Uh, generally represented by one um, dot that is elevated on a computer screen. Um, a precise measurement system for web design lacks flexibility as screen size is changed. So it's basically what um, your screen size is for the most part, but it kind of lacks some flexibility. That's one of the comments. All right, so uh, this is just another important uh, thing to note before we really dive into Photoshop. Um, a black and white checkerboard behind an image um, means there is not background or background in the screen. It is transparent. So if we had some kind of picture and we could see these black and white checkerboards behind it, that means that it's a transparent black background. Uh, I'm sure right now if you Google transparent background um, image or something, it'll pop up and you'll see that black and white checkerboard. All right, types of fields, uh, files, fields. We'll get there eventually. Um, PSD, Photoshop documents, so native file format for Adobe Photoshop, support transparency, support layers, text, and effects, large file sizes, industry standard for raster graphic editing. Something very important to remember, when you save something as a PSD or a Photoshop document, you are still working on it. You are not done with it. Does that make sense? Um, so when we're working in Photoshop, if you just save it in Photoshop, that is not how you will submit it. If you submit anything as a Photoshop document, I will not grade it because I will not open it because it will be a long process for me to open. And that doesn't mean you finish it. Um, it's very important that you understand the difference between Photoshop document and then saving it as a GIF or saving it as a um, PDF or JPEG. We'll get into all of this right now. Um, so uh, GIF is a graphic um, interchange format. Um, some people say a GIF. I call it a GIF. The guy who created it calls it a GIF, but uh, to me, that's a GIF. But that's just me. Uh, standard format for animation on the internet supports transparency, losses, compression, uh, colors equal 256 8 bit. That may have improved a tad bit, but uh, yeah, there you go. All right. So, most common format text, clip art, animation, icons, logos, simple diagram, line drawings, graphics with large blocks of single color. Graphics with transparent area and then images displayed on computer screens and on websites. Obviously, you can't print out a GIF. Well, you can, but it'll just be a still image. Um, a JPEG is a joint photographic expert group. Um, does not support animation or transparency, lossy compression. Colors are 16.7M or 24 bit and it's high quality. Uh, commonly used for desktop publishing, uh, photographs, photographs and uh, natural artwork. Um, Scan photographs, emailing photographs, digital camera photographs. So again, yeah, these are the images you take. These are pictures you take on your phone, for instance. Um, so PNG is a portable network graphic, does not support animation, supports transparency, lossless compression, supports multiple color depths, PNG 8, 8-bit color, small graphics, PNG 24, 24-bit color, basic graphics. Uh, commonly used for replacing GIFs and TIFF images, which we'll go over TIFFs later. Um, online viewing of images. So digital negative format or a DNG is a uh, publicly available arch uh, archive, archival format for raw files which are generated by various digital cameras. This, address the, uh, this addresses the lack of an open standard for raw files created in individual camera models and ensures that photo photographers easily access their files. File, uh, large document format of PSV Files are um, a large document format similar to a PSD file, but for larger image sizes. So here's some terms you need to know. High dynamic range, HDR, is a setting on the iPhone camera app. Um, the, um, the letters stand for high dynamic range. It means that your camera will process photos slightly differently than normal or in, uh, in order to capture greater detail from bright and dark areas in your photo. Uh, metadata is a set of standardized information about the file, such as an author name, resolution, color space, copyright, and keywords applied to it. For example, most digital cameras attach some basic information to an image file, such as height, width, file format, and time the image was taken. You can use metadata to streamline your workflow and organize your files. So metadata is very helpful. You don't think about it, but it allows you basically to organize your files. That's going to be the most important thing of metadata. Um, again, I said in the first PowerPoint, 
print an image uh, and the image mode is CMYK. If, you, if we're printing, we're using CMYK. If we're all on the computer, it's RGB. Um, copyright info, info uh, entered file, file and selecting the description tab. We're going to talk about that later. Adding color tint to a grayscale image and printing it on two separate uh, plates equals image mode uh, duo tone. So we're going to talk about those things eventually. All right, so that's it for um, the digital image notes. Hopefully you got them all. If you didn't, then you can go back really quickly and fill them in because you should have all that information right there within Canvas. So, so yeah, we take this down. Um, you can see they're both right here. If you go to modules, you go to digital image notes, you can get all that information if you didn't know. All right, so you should have received an email um, from basically an Adobe account, um, and it will walk you through creating your Adobe account. I would prefer you not say sign in with Google. Try to sign in and just type out your Gmail from school. Again, make sure you're using your school Gmail account and make sure you are using um, the, basically the same password you use. Or if you have to change it up anything, make sure you write it down. Make sure you've got that information. Try to use the same one you use to sign up for Gmetrics or Certiport. And if you haven't done that yet, you need to do that as well. And you can see how to do that um, on the announcements from last week. So that's it for today. I'm done. And that's how it's going to be. I hope y'all will continue to go uh, and come to these Zoom meetings. I know they're going to be short, but that's a good thing. And I appreciate you all getting up and being here for first period. Um, but like I said, I'm going to make them very short so you don't have to worry about them so much. Um, but yeah, that's all we're doing today. Make sure you try to make those Adobe accounts. If you have a problem with that, um, let me know. Um, but try to do your best with it. And if you want to just wait till tomorrow, that's perfectly fine. It's not going to be that big of a deal um, because we're really not going to get on Adobe um, until Thursday. So we have tomorrow as well to make sure we, we solve all these issues. So no, no big worry. So, all right. Y'all have a good day. I'm going to stop recording. Let me do that first.